Mr. Holmes, did you see my brother at Scotland Yard? Is he all right? I'll do anything to save my brother, Mr. Holmes. I am unable to see any higher. I need to find something to lift my lamp. I am unable to see any higher. I need to find something to lift my lamp. I am unable to see any higher. I need to find something to lift my lamp. This mirror is turned towards Half Moon Street. Locked, locked. I'll do anything to save my brother, Mr. Holmes. This should be useful. This is most definitely a bullet hole. The brick cracks are fresh. Watson, there was a third shot fired in this street. Constable Marrow, I would value your assistance in this investigation. It would be my pleasure, Mr. Holmes. I would like to make sure that there are no places in Half Moon Street where a man could hide while you were running through it with your lamp. All right, Mr. Holmes, what should I do? Take your lamp and start walking, just as you did before, and try to find me. Understood.
No, this is not how I walked at the time of the crime. I was more attentive. Let's start over again. No, this is not how I walked at the time of the crime. I was more attentive. Let's start over again. I can see you very well, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. No, this is not how I walked at the time of the crime. I was more attentive. Let's start over again. Here you are, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. Mr. Holmes, it wasn't difficult to find you at all. It is obvious now. No one could escape Constable Marrow's lamp while hiding in the street. It would be my pleasure to assist you with your investigation, Mr. Holmes. I'll do anything to save my brother, Mr. Holmes. I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. Locked. Locked. Such a young man, and already a murderer. A perfect match. So, Mr. Turner broke his stick when it became stuck between the cobblestones. He did not mention that he was so near to the victims. The books on this shelf are in a mess. It looks as though Mr. Turner was trying to find something in a hurry here a short while ago.
No, it didn't happen this way. It didn't happen this way. It didn't happen this way. So Mr. Turner used a book to hide an object that he found on Kenneth Butler's body. The question is, what did he find? I can see prints from greasy fingers upon the cover of this book. Let us take a closer look. Well now, what a find, a precious jewel concealed inside a book. A bracelet with a unique ram's head design, a distinctive feature of ancient Grecian artifacts, probably of the Hellenistic era. Mr. Turner, how would it be possible for a man of advanced years, such as yourself, to rush from his bed to the window in a matter of seconds, as you have stated? Well, uh, I'm, I'm able to move very quickly, despite my age, and when the situation requires it, Mr. Holmes. I highly doubt that, Mr. Turner. I observe that you suffer a severe limp due to your injured right leg. It would have taken at least ten seconds for you to approach the window. That means you could have easily missed something or someone in Half Moon Street during that time. You're right, Mr. Holmes. I could have missed something. But it did seem to me that everything happened so quickly. Oh, time can pull tricks on you. 
And what of everything else that you told us? Mr. Turner, it is vital that we have your complete and true statement. Mr. Holmes, I do assure you that the other things I said were most sincere. Mr. Turner, you were not sincere with me. Not then, and not now. But, but, but Mr. Holmes... This, Mr. Turner, does not look like anything that a poor man might possess. It is worth more than the home that you live in. I, I can explain. No, merely correct me if I am wrong. You saw Leighton Chapman through the window, but you also noticed a glittering object on the ground, this precious jewel. You walked down and took the bracelet from the body of Kenneth Butler, and when you heard the whistles, you hurried away. That broke your walking stick. It caught fast between the cobbles. Constable Marrow was unable to see you in the window as you were climbing up the stairs on your way back to your flat. Upon returning home, you hid the precious jewel inside a book. Mr. Holmes, please don't send me to prison. I didn't do anything bad. I'm just a poor man. When I chanced upon the bracelet, I saw it as an opportunity to make a little money. I was desperate. I only took the bracelet, that's all I swear. You made a mistake by lying to me. But you are not a criminal. I believe that. Although I must return this bracelet to its rightful owner. It would be my pleasure to assist you with your investigation, Mr. Mr. Holmes, did you see my brother at Scotland Yard? Is he all right? I suppose that I shall have to move my stool now. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Leighton, I confess I am puzzled. Why should a young lad like you take a gun from the hands of a dead man and set off in pursuit of a probable killer? I know. I keep wondering that, but at the time it was, it was like a reflex. A criminal ought to be arrested, and he was armed. You were willing to risk your life. That was a little foolish, unless you wanted revenge. No, Mr. Holmes. I was just being brave and stupid. I'm sure that you were, but I believe that you may have recognized one of the victims, Brian Vercotti. You knew that gentleman well, did you not? How? However could you know that? You have a typical tattoo of the Westgate Brotherhood upon your hand. I observed exactly the same mark upon Mr. Vercotti. You came to know him from your sharing a past prison sentence. Am I correct, Mr. Chapman? Oh, God. You're right, Mr. Holmes. Would you tell me a little about Brian Vercotti? We were convicted for a robbery. Once in prison, both of us joined one of these fraternities. During that year, we tried to help each other out, you know? And you were quite young then, I believe. Yes, Mr. Holmes, we were. We'd only stolen a pound of meat. After we were released, and when I saw what my little brother had become, I decided to work towards living an honest life. And Vercotti? 
He had a hard time. His sister had died in a Whitechapel dispensary while he was in prison. He had no family anymore. Our path split. He fell back into crime. So you lost him? Yes. And for around two years, I heard no news of him at all. We shall see you soon, young man.